as I like to joke with my wife, other than my bald head and probably my waist size, I think I'm glad that I've been able to stretch something else in life. <laughs> this podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good morning, good morning, Amar Avias. Previously, episode 24, then episode 665. Now we're about to connect and have a conversation a couple of years after <laughs> we first spoke uh, way back in 2016. Amar, how are you doing, my friend? I am doing good and a big hello, hello to you, Angel, and to all the listeners. Uh, for those of you who might have heard me in the past, uh, hello again. And thank you for tuning in again, knowing what I did or did not do the last time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you please to tell us uh, first up are you still in india i am still in india yes all right all right and are you still producing podcasts yes we still are producing podcasts oh, wonderful give us some updates what's up sure so uh well maybe not as exciting numbers as you angel but uh, so far we have published over 500 episodes uh, i think eight podcasts will be launching number nine and number 10 next month oh, that's amazing when we spoke i think you were up to five podcasts uh, that's right it's doubled wow Wow, well done, Thank well done. So how can people access that service? Uh, sure. Uh, so our website is gathastory.com and, and uh, it's G-A-A-T-H-A story, S-T-O-R-Y.com. And our most of our shows are now in multiple languages as well, uh, English being the default, but we have added a lot more Indian languages now. Hmm. So what's going on in that network? Is it that uh, you are taking external podcasts and editing and producing that? Or is it that you're producing specific podcasts for India? Wow, uh, that's an interesting question, Angel. So we are still doing most of our content in-house. That is, we create and we produce the shows and we market them. And they, uh, you know, there are a couple of custom shows that we are doing on topics that both me and, you know, Minu, my wife and co-founder have expertise in, uh, largely for me in sustainability, for her in insurance and risk management. Those are, I would say, uh, you know, more partner driven in the sense we do have a business on board backing them. But uh, the main shows that we have, uh, children's storytelling, you know, my kitab, book publishing, where Amanda was a past guest. Uh, so those we are still very much producing and marketing. Well, that is amazing. It's a great pleasure to hear that you're still doing that. Oh, my. So you didn't just leave me speaking here and come back to meet me speaking again, like you've been doing <laughs> the speaking as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and interestingly uh, enough, uh, Angel, we are trying out a few new models as well, uh, in the sense that there are a couple of shows wherein we gave the idea to the narrator, and we worked out this system wherein they record from their home, you know, set up sort of home recording offices, upload it on a cloud server, something like a Dropbox, from there it goes to the editor, we listen just to the finished version, the marketing person goes ahead and markets the show, and sometimes I don't even know what they have published, Perhaps. which is both exciting <laughs> and scary, right? <laughs> well, I think once you start, it's like there's a story that uh, Dave Ramsey shares, you know, he says, you put the rope on, and then you let the animal go by letting some of the rope go right and then you pull back if you need to uh -huh. but if that person is doing what they need to then you let go the rope right and you let more rope go and more rope go till it reaches the point you don't need the rope right i'm uh -huh. guessing it's a similar type scenario that occurred yeah that's so beautifully put. Thank you. I, I was not aware of this uh, this philosophy or this approach, Angel. Thank you for mentioning this. You're welcome. You're welcome. So when we did speak, your wife, uh, she was doing the sacrificing in this particular project, right? For you uh, to be full-time, right? Uh, right. How is she doing? Uh, she is still on with her uh, role in corporate India. 
which is the close cousin of corporate America, as <laughs> <laughs> as one might expect. Uh, and incidentally, I have taken up another assignment as well, which was more of uh, you know of my own personal calling. So there was this opportunity to work with a nonprofit in the forestry space or like in sustainability space. And the job description said, you know, you have to set up the office, hire people, convince businesses that they need to be more environmentally friendly, and you have to manage, you know, run the country operations. And I looked at it and I said, gosh, I wish I could do two jobs. And then my wife looked at it and said, why are you even asking me? You know you want to do this. You know you can do this. You know, what's going to happen? You're, you're going to have to say no to one of the two at a certain point in time, right? Uh, fortunately, Angel, two years going strong, I think we've been able to manage both. Mm, yeah, that's wonderful. It seems as though you're continuously stretching uh, the bar as to what you can do specifically to be able to learn more. Is that accurate? Uh, that is very true. And the idea here was that uh, also brings in a discipline angel. Doing two roles has actually made me more uh, conscious of the time, conscious of the resources that we have at hand. And more importantly, I'm learning to say no to a lot more things and plan a lot ahead, knowing that you know every minute I am not spending on either of these two things, I am probably unable to achieve certain targets. Right. So, uh, yeah, it has helped. And purely on a lighter note, as I like to joke with my wife, other than my bald head and uh, probably my waist size, uh, I think I'm glad that I've been able to stretch something else in life. <laughs> <laughs> No, you were stretching as well, a writing a novel, right? It was national novel something. What, what was that about again? 50,000 words, I remember. Yes, that's correct. So November of every month, uh, that's the National Novel Writing Month. It's a global event. I believe it started in the West Coast of the United States. And the idea is that in 30 calendar days, you have to write 50,000 words. That's the length of a novel, which works out to about 1,800 words every day. How did that go? I, it went well. I was able to finish the first draft. Uh, never ended up sending it to the editor because somehow I was not happy with, with the output. And then I decided to focus a lot more on the business side of podcasting. And then this other thing came up. So yeah, it's, it's actually fallen behind. Mm -hmm. Something that I've not been able to do justice to. How did it feel though? Like after you wrote those words like, and you put it there? How did it feel to, like, did it transform your ways of thinking? Uh, actually, it did. So, um, you know, the topic that I was writing on was uh, actually related to, uh, it was a science fiction on uh, climate change. So I'd set out to write something else, ended up writing something else altogether, uh, which is a different conversation. I think, you know, maybe we revisit after two years. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of things that I thought were going to happen in 2040, uh, you know, drier, a rainy season, more rains in, in areas where it should, you know, it rains a lot already. That's already happening in India. How I wish I had published that book, because that's a uh, resource uh, maybe someday that every city planner, every government official, every corporate executive should be reading. Mm -hmm. So it kind of pains me. But then again, you know, on, on that note, uh, the commitment that I have made to myself is that by the end of this year, I will get that published. Mm, love that. Love that. Well, my friend, I am standing here as your podcast accountability partner, you know, getting back oh. to see what's going on with Amar. But Amar, I want to say thanks to I want to say thanks. You're the third uh, time over guest of this podcast. And it's really fascinating to have been able to map your growth in that. Not that I'm mapping it futuristically, but to see where you are currently it's really a beautiful opportunity that you've given me to uh, have insight into you and your wife and uh, how you guys are impacting uh, India. I want to say thank you really from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being true to your own unique real self uh, because you are standing as an inspiration and motivation to the world, specifically to me, my friend. Uh, uh, so thank you for that. No, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to kind of, you know, for me to actually scratch back into the archives and find out what was I doing and what I'm not doing, you know. Yeah, yeah definitely a pleasure. What, what about the dog? How's the dog going? Oh, he's fine. He's five years old, just got a new bed, so extremely happy, sleeping 18 hours a day. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm you know, doing things that dogs do. <laughs> In closing, Amar, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? 
Yeah. Angel, for your for your audience, a message from absolutely the bottom of my heart and something that I've been struggling and grappling with. Uh, you know, you and I communicated off and on and some conversations just fell apart, right? The mistake that I have made, and I hope that your audience learned from my mistakes, I tried to be on multiple social media platforms and connect with people that I always aspired to, but I fell flat on my face when it comes came to follow through. What I have learned from this experience is I am available only on two platforms now. Uh, one is on LinkedIn and the other one is email. So, you know, anybody else who writes to me, I may get terribly delayed in responding, which may result in either, you know, not doing justice to the relationship or the connection, or more importantly, they may feel offended, right? But I'm okay with it because then I know that whoever I'm in contact with, I'm able to follow up with them and keep up my commitment. Yeah. Well, again, my friend, thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. This podcast is produced by PodEdits. Visit podedits.com for professional podcast publishing. <laughs>